Let us embark on a journey into a chapter of history so dark and disturbing, it still casts a shadow over the present. We delve into the reign of King Leopold II of Belgium a tale of insatiable ambition and unimaginable cruelty that unfolded within the confines of the Congo Free State. Though history lessons are often painted as dry and distant, this narrative is anything but. It exposes the depths of human greed and its devastating consequences, revealing a king who valued an entire nation solely for its resources, exploiting its people with a callous disregard for their lives. Under Leopold's iron fist, the Congo Free State morphed into a living hell for its inhabitants. Millions were forced into labor camps, enduring unimaginable hardships and barbarity. Those who dared to resist or failed to meet the king's unreasonable quotas faced unimaginable brutality, often ending in death or mutilation. The sheer scale of Leopold's exploitation reached unimaginable levels, leading to a staggering population decline from a vibrant nation of 20 million souls. The Congo's population dwindled to a mere 10 million under his reign. Despite the horrific truth, this dark chapter remains shrouded in silence. King Leopold II and his atrocities have largely faded from the collective memory, leaving many unaware of the suffering inflicted upon the Congolese people. But the consequences of Leopold's reign reverberate to this day, leaving indelible marks on the Congo and the world. Today, we embark on a journey of discovery, unearthing this tragic past and unveiling its enduring impact. We will delve into the depths of human cruelty and explore the legacy of a king who used an entire nation as a pawn in his insatiable quest for wealth and power. Hash hash unveiling the shadows, King Leopold II and the Congo Free State. Let us pull back the curtain on a grim chapter in history, a tale of avarice, exploitation, and brutality whose echoes still resonate today. We delve into the reign of King Leopold II of Belgium and his iron fist over the Congo Free State. Though history can often feel distant and dusty, this story pulses with chilling immediacy. It is a narrative of a king blinded by avarice, who viewed an entire nation as nothing more than a personal treasure trove, its people mere instruments for extracting wealth. Under Leopold's ruthless rule, the Congo Free State became a living hell. Millions of Congolese individuals were forced into labor camps, subjected to back-breaking toil under inhumane conditions. Resistance or failure to meet the king's insatiable demands was met with unimaginable cruelty, with violence and mutilation becoming chillingly commonplace. The scale of the exploitation was staggering. Within the span of Leopold's reign, the population of the Congo plummeted by a staggering 50%, a testament to the unfathomable suffering inflicted. Yet, despite the gravity of this dark chapter, it remained shrouded in obscurity. Many remain blissfully unaware of King Leopold II and the atrocities he orchestrated in the Congo. His reign and its consequences represent a historical injustice that demands to be brought to light. Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the hidden truths. We will explore the lasting impact of Leopold's rule, examining the scars it etched not only on the Congo, but on the global conscience. This is a story that demands to be heard a story that compels us to confront the darkest aspects of our past and strive for a future built on justice and equality. As we delve deeper, prepare yourselves to be confronted by stark realities and uncomfortable truths. This is a journey into the shadows, but one that is necessary to understand the present and build a brighter future. King Leopold II of Belgium, fueled by insatiable ambition and a thirst for wealth, set his sights on the vast and resource-rich Congo region in Central Africa. The year was 1876, and Leopold, a shrewd businessman and cunning strategist, cloaked his true motives behind a facade of humanitarianism. He established the International African Association, ostensibly dedicated to promoting scientific research and improving the lives of Africans. This carefully crafted image of a benevolent leader provided the perfect smokescreen. For his true intentions, the brutal exploitation of Congo and its people, driven by the allure of abundant rubber, ivory, and minerals, Leopold embarked on a calculated path to seize control of the region. 
In 1879, he enlisted the services of the renowned explorer Henry Morton Stanley. Stanley's mission, shrouded in secrecy, went beyond mere exploration. Tasked with mapping the Congo River Basin, Stanley was also entrusted with the clandestine task of securing treaties with local chiefs. These agreements, presented as mutually beneficial trade deals and alliances, masked a sinister reality. They were instruments of manipulation, effectively transferring land and resources into Leopold's hands. Stanley's success paved the way for the establishment of the notorious Congo Free State in 1885. This vast territory, encompassing over 900,000 square miles in the heart of Africa, became Leopold's personal domain, a playground where he could exploit its riches without restraint. The veneer of humanitarianism was finally stripped away, revealing the true face of Leopold's ambition. A ruthless exploitation, fueled by greed and devoid of any genuine concern for the well-being of the Congolese people. King Leopold II of Belgium, a man driven by insatiable greed and ambition, fixated his gaze upon the lush and fertile lands of the Congo. This vast region, teeming with rubber, ivory, and precious minerals, held the promise of immense wealth, a siren song that resonated deeply within the king's avaricious heart. However, Leopold was not content with simply acquiring the Congo as a colony for his nation. He craved absolute control, the ability to exploit its bountiful resources without any constraints or oversight. To achieve this nefarious goal, he devised a cunning plan, cloaking his ambitions in the guise of altruism and humanitarianism. In 1876, Leopold established the International African Association a seemingly benevolent organization dedicated to scientific research and the advancement of civilization in Africa. This facade, carefully constructed to mask his true intentions, served as a smokescreen for his calculated machinations. Under this veil of supposed philanthropy, Leopold orchestrated a series of covert operations aimed at securing his personal dominion over the Congo. He employed the services of Henry Morton Stanley, a renowned explorer, to embark on a clandestine mission. This expedition, disguised as a journey of exploration and trade, was in reality a calculated campaign of coercion and manipulation. Stanley, wielding promises and threats with equal measure, pressured local chiefs into signing treaties that would ultimately relinquish control of vast swathes of their land and resources to the Belgian king. These treaties, rife with misinformation and deceit, were not instruments of mutual benefit, but rather, cunning tools employed to orchestrate the subjugation of an entire people. Through Stanley's cunning and Leopold's ruthless tactics, the Congo Free State was officially established in 1885. This personal fiefdom, encompassing over 900,000 square miles, became a playground for Leopold's insatiable greed. The facade of civilization that had initially veiled Leopold's true motives was ruthlessly discarded. In its place, a brutal regime of forced labor and exploitation was implemented. The Congolese people, stripped of their freedom and autonomy, were subjected to unimaginable horrors. They were forced to toil in rubber plantations under inhumane conditions, their quotas unattainable and their bodies subjected to brutal punishments for any perceived shortcomings. Beyond the rubber trade, the Congolese were also forced to mine for diamonds and copper, enriching Leopold's coffers while their own lives were marked by suffering and deprivation. The king's insatiable appetite for wealth fueled a reign of terror, leaving a trail of devastation and despair in its wake. The construction of the Matadik and Chasa railway stands as a stark testament to Leopold's barbarity. This project, fueled by the forced labor of thousands of Congolese, claimed countless lives due to disease, starvation, and brutal working conditions. Each tie laid and each mock completed was stained with the blood and sweat of those who were sacrificed on the altar of Leopold's greed. The legacy of the Congo Free State remains a dark stain on the history of colonialism. It serves as a chilling reminder of the horrors that can be unleashed when greed and ambition are allowed to reign unchecked. It is a story of unimaginable suffering, but also one of resilience and resistance. Through their tireless efforts, 
the Congolese people eventually secured their independence, reclaiming their land and their lives from the clutches of a tyrannical king. Their struggle serves as an enduring beacon of hope, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to overcome even the most brutal forms of oppression. A shroud of darkness descended upon the Congo with Leopold II's rapacious appetite for wealth, tightened its grip on the land and its people. The once vibrant communities were transformed into desolate wastelands, echoing with the cries of the enslaved and the groans of the dying. Rubber, the black gold of the era, became the currency of suffering, its extraction fueled by a system of barbarity that defied human comprehension. Millions were forced into the depths of the emerald labyrinth, their bodies contorted into the grotesque forms demanded by the insatiable rubber quotas. Failure to meet these quotas was met with unimaginable torture, mutilation, and death. Children were ripped from their mother's arms, their innocence shattered as they became tools in the king's insatiable quest for riches. Leopold's insatiable greed extended beyond the rubber plantations. The Congolese were forced to labor under the lash and mines, extracting diamonds and copper that enriched the king's coffers while leaving their own pockets empty. The construction of the infamous Matadi Kinshasa Railway became a monument to human exploitation a testament to the king's callous disregard for human life. Thousands perished in its construction, succumbing to disease, starvation, and the brutality of their overseers. The reign of terror unleashed by Leopold II was a stain upon the face of humanity. It was a period defined by the systematic dehumanization and decimation of a people. Their lives sacrificed on the altar of avarice and ambition, the echoes of this dark chapter in history still resonate today, a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of unchecked greed and the enduring resilience of the human spirit. In the heart of Africa, veiled by the verdant expanse of the Congo Basin, lay a land yearning for peace. But under the cruel hand of King Leopold II of Belgium, this paradise was transformed into a living hell. Masquerading as a benevolent benefactor, Leopold established the Congo Free State in 1885, not to uplift the people, but to exploit their land and resources for his own insatiable avarice. Within the borders of this vast domain, Leopold's true colors emerged. The facade of humanitarianism crumbled, revealing a brutal regime fueled by forced labor and exploitation. Millions of Congolese were ripped from their families and villages, forced to toil under the scorching sun Extracting the coveted rubber from the lush forests, the quotas demanded were impossibly high, and failure was met with unimaginable cruelty. The snap of a whip, the wail of a child, the chilling silence of a life. Extinguished these were the gruesome symphonies that echoed through the Congolese forests. Leopold's agents, armed with their instruments of torture and driven by insatiable greed, inflicted unspeakable horrors upon the innocent. Beyond the rubber plantations, suffering extended its grasp. The rich mineral deposits of the Congo, coveted by the king, became another source of human misery. Forced into the dark tunnels of mines, Congolese men and women perished from exhaustion, disease, and accidents, their bodies fueling the insatiable appetite of Leopold's coffers. The fruits of this brutal exploitation were vast. Ships laden with ivory, rubber, and diamonds sailed across the ocean, enriching the king and his cronies while leaving the Congolese people destitute and broken. The riches extracted from their land did not trickle down, instead nourishing the opulent lifestyle of a king who cared nothing for the human cost of his greed. The legacy of Leopold's rule is one of immense suffering and loss. Estimates suggest that up to 10 million Congolese died during this period, victims of violence disease, and starvation. Villages were decimated, families torn apart, and cultural traditions shattered. The Congo Free State became a macabre monument to human greed, a testament to the devastating consequences of unchecked power. The cries of the Congolese people did not go unanswered. Courageous individuals like the journalist Edmund Murrell and the missionary Roger Casement risked their lives to expose the atrocities committed in the heart of Africa. Their tireless efforts shone a light on the darkness, eventually forcing the world to take notice. In 1908, the international community, 
spurred by the growing evidence of Leopold's barbarity, finally intervened. The Congo Free State was dissolved, and the territory was annexed as a colony of Belgium. While this marked the end of Leopold's direct control, the scars of his reign remained deeply etched in the soul of the Congolese nation. The Congo's journey to recovery has been long and arduous. The trauma of the past continues to cast a shadow on the present, hindering development and fostering deep-seated inequalities. Yet, amidst the challenges, the resilience of the Congolese people shines through. Their unwavering spirit and determination to rebuild their lives offer hope for a brighter future. Though the chapters of the Congo Free State may have closed, the story of its people, their suffering, and their resilience stands as a stark reminder of the darkest side of human ambition. It is a story that must never be forgotten, lest we repeat the mistakes of the past and allow greed to triumph over humanity. In 1876, King Leopold II of Belgium, fueled by insatiable greed, set his sights on the vast and resource-rich Congo. Disguising his ambition under a veil of philanthropy, he established the International African Association, ostensibly for scientific and humanitarian purposes. However, this was a mere facade, a smokescreen for his true intent, to exploit the Congo's wealth for his own personal gain. Through manipulation and coercion, Leopold secured treaties from local chiefs, effectively stealing their land and resources. By 1885, he had established the Congo Free State, a personal colony where he could operate without accountability. This vast territory, spanning over 900,000 square miles, became a living nightmare for millions of Congolese. Forced into grueling labor under the threat of violence, men, women, and children were driven to extract rubber from the lush forests. Quotas were impossibly high, and failure meant brutal punishment, often ending in death. This brutal regime extended beyond rubber, as the Congolese were forced to mine for copper and diamonds, their lives and well-being sacrificed for Leopold's personal wealth. From ivory to diamonds, the Congo's riches flowed into Leopold's coffers. While the Congolese people suffered unimaginable hardships, the construction of the Matadik and Shasa Railway, another testament to Leopold's greed, took a devastating toll. Thousands of workers perished from disease, starvation, and brutal working conditions, leaving a trail of death in its wake. News of the atrocities eventually reached the outside world, prompting international pressure and outrage. The reports were chilling stories of forced labor, mutilation, and mass killings. In 1908, faced with mounting criticism and the threat of international intervention, Leopold was forced to relinquish control of the Congo Free State. However, the scars of this dark period remain deeply etched in the history of the Congo and its people. The legacy of Leopold's reign is one of unimaginable suffering and exploitation. The Congo Free State serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of unchecked greed and colonial oppression, and a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable suffering. This chapter in history should not be forgotten. The horrors of the Congo Free State serve as a cautionary tale reminding us of the potential for human cruelty and the importance of fighting for justice and human rights. King Leopold II of Belgium, driven by an insatiable hunger for wealth and power, saw in the Congo not a nation, but a treasure trove waiting to be emptied. Under the guise of philanthropy and civilization, he orchestrated a brutal takeover, transforming the Congo into his personal fiefdom and unleashing a reign of terror that would forever scar the nation. Leopold's mask of benevolence quickly crumbled as the true nature of his intentions became apparent. He manipulated and coerced local chiefs into signing treaties, relinquishing their land and resources, effectively handing over their people to the whims of a ruthless dictator. The Congo Free State, established in 1885, was a sham. A vast, ungovernable territory ruled with an iron fist where the only law was the king's insatiable greed. Beneath the veneer of progress and modernization, a horrifying reality unfolded. The Congolese people were subjected to an unimaginable system of forced labor, driven by brutal quotas and unimaginable cruelty. They were ripped from their families, villages, and traditions, 
forced to toil under the scorching sun, extracting rubber from the lush forests that were once their home. Failure to meet impossible quotas resulted in unimaginable punishments, torture, mutilation, even death. Beyond the rubber plantations, the exploitation extended further. Men were forced to work in the treacherous mines, extracting copper and diamonds, their bodies broken and their spirits crushed. Villages were raised, families torn apart, and entire communities decimated. Leopold's reign of terror wasn't merely about extracting resources, it was about subjugating an entire population, breaking their will and exploiting their every ounce of life. The fruits of this barbarity fueled an extravagant lifestyle for Leopold back in Belgium. Palaces were built, monuments erected, and a life of luxury sustained, all on the backs of the suffering Congolese. The Grand Railway connecting Matadi to Kinshasa, a symbol of Leopold's supposed progress, was a monument to his greed. Built by the blood and sweat of countless forced laborers who perished under its construction, the true cost of Leopold's reign is beyond comprehension. Estimates suggest that up to 10 million Congolese perished during this period, nearly half the population. The social fabric of the nation was ripped apart, cultural traditions were erased, and the scars of this brutal exploitation remain deeply etched in the Congolese psyche to this day. Although Leopold was eventually forced to relinquish control of the Congo in 1908, the damage he inflicted continues to resonate. The infrastructure he built was designed to serve his own interests, leaving the nation with inadequate resources and underdeveloped infrastructure that continues to hamper its development. The legacy of this dark chapter in history serves as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of unchecked greed and colonial exploitation. The Congo's descent into darkness under King Leopold II is not just a historical footnote. It is a cautionary tale for all of us. It stands as a testament to the human capacity for both immense cruelty and boundless resilience. As we move forward, we must remember the victims of this barbarity and fight for a future where such atrocities never happen again. We must strive to create a world where justice prevails and exploitation is replaced by respect and collaboration. Only then can we truly learn from the horrors of the past and build a brighter future for all.